What's up y'all, welcome back to Seashift. Today I'm gonna show you guys some tips that I do every month, every time I get back from a fishing trip that helps make sure my boat is always in tip top shape and always gonna be running great. And this way I know things are where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be. So the first thing that I do every month since I've owned the boat is at the beginning of every month, I spray the boat down, especially the trailer with Deputy 40. It's just Deputy 40 and I got a nice big spray can. What I'll do is I'll come to the tires and I'll just go ahead and spray them all. Make sure everything is getting nice and lubricated. And I'll even hit the calibers real quick. I'll come back here, I'll spray off the connections for the lights. I'll just hit all these nuts and bolts that are on the trailer. And I'll come up here to the front of the trailer. And I'll just continue to do the same thing. I'll make sure I hit my electrical connection there. Just nice little spray there. And what I'll also do is I'll also go and do it on the truck. Another thing on the brakes I'll try and get, or on the axles, excuse me, is I'll come back here and I'll try and spray off the back of the axle, back where the tire connects, the back of the drum and all that, the best I can. I'll even try to spray the axles themselves as much as possible. The MD40 does wonders, especially if you get new trailer parts or it's just a brand new boat just to spray it off at the beginning of every month it's just a great way to keep it from rusting too quick or rusting at all if you do it religiously like I do and boats I've had the boat for a year now over a year and I've had no issues with the trailer and so far a lot of the nuts and bolts look great if I ever need to take it off it should be fairly easy right now so I'm gonna keep on doing that on the trailer so something else with the trailer Every time I get back, whether it's fresh water or salt water, obviously, especially salt water, I'm gonna spray the whole trailer down with fresh water. I'm gonna be sure to come up underneath here, spray off all the axles, all those nuts and bolts, the fronts of the tires. Be sure to go in here and hit the drums, the calipers, all that stuff. I don't wanna miss a single thing on this boat. I'll make sure I get it all. Another thing I'm gonna do while I'm doing that is I'm also going to check my oil bath hubs. It's just, just something to keep in mind. When I first got the trailer, one of them was busted and I noticed all the fluid was leaked out of it. I just so happened to catch it immediately. So that's something you can do every time you get back, every time you get ready to leave on a trip like we're getting ready to do here soon and, and tomorrow. All about your maintenance. Another tip, also always be checking your tire pressures. Just something to do for the first of the month. Check your tire pressures, your, your hubs, whether they need to be greased or their oil bath hubs. Oh, I'm always spraying the trailer down Debbie 40. That's also another good once in a month thing. Just an extra tip for you. So I'll come in here and I'll be sure to spray down the... I don't know what that's called, but I'll spray that down. It looks important, so I'll spray it down. It's the hydraulics, I think. That's the word, hydraulic something. Be sure to hit all the nuts and bolts here. Even though it's all stainless steel, it's always best just to give a little hit. Hit all these bolts back here. Try not to get it too much on this the steering column itself there. Just give everything a nice little spray. Now while I'm back here at the motor, whenever we do the oil change every 100 hours, as well as all the other proper maintenance, impellers and all that, we'll go ahead and take some W40 and we'll hit some of the key parts in the motor as well. We'll try and do that every 100 hours, every 50 hours go in the motor. And then here, give stuff a nice little spray. right up over here, spray the back of the motor, get all that. Come back here, Let's top, spray the top of those. Get a little sprayzy down there just because there's some wires, electrical wires and stuff. And you never know every once in a while, a little bit of water may get into the build for some odd reason, but it's best just to keep those covered. Got that spray, put the cover back on. Obviously, as you can see, we got batteries back here, so I'm gonna take the recording. Those nice little hit, got some wires and the switches over there. Just get everything a nice little light dust in there. And then on the batteries and on the charger and on the top of the power pole here, I always give them a little wipe down so it's not too much. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tops of the batteries right here. 
gonna go ahead and hit the back of the electronics here along with all the wiring I actually had an instance a couple trips ago where this front hatch fell down in rough season I didn't know we were taking wave after wave spraying all the spray was getting in here but again I spray the boat down once a month with WD-40 and I came in here and sprayed it down wiped it down I've had no issues no issues again I'll take my rag here I just get the batteries a little wiped down some other things I may hit like up here this little piece up here likes to rust every once in a while so I'll just get that little spray and we're good for a couple more months another thing I like to do is I'll come in here now let's go ahead and hit all my little latches, hit the backs of them. I'll wipe that down, get it nice and clean in here. And these are just some things that you can do that can really prolong the life of a lot of your equipment, especially in, a, in the harsh Florida environment that we have here. Also up here I have the connections for the trolling motor. I'll get those a little spray in there as well. And I'll spray it. Hit that. Another thing I do, not, not once every month, but maybe once every couple months, is I'll take some good wax and I'll be sure to wax the whole outside of the boat as well as all the soft spots on the inside of the boat. Probably about once every four months I like to go ahead and do that. Hit the hard top, all the smooth surfaces. Just really gives the boat a nice shine, lets the water beat off and it just keeps it looking really, really nice. And on top of waxing, I don't have it done right now, but I always leave my boat covered when I'm not gonna use it for prolonged periods of time. If I don't plan on using the boat for more than five days, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the whole boat up with a tarp or a, if you can put it in a garage, it's even better. It's really gonna prolong the life of your, your electronics, your cushions, if you can't take them off, the, the sides of the boat, especially this for the parts of the boat that are be exposed to the sun. It, the Florida sun will do some damaging things to your boat. And again, that's what this video is here. I'm showing you what I do and stuff that I was showing from my father, my grandfather that really helps prolong the life of our boats. I'm just gonna go around the whole boat, hit all those. And that'll pretty much wrap up what I use the boat, what I spray inside of the boat. So on top of spraying the connection for the trolling motor, what I'll do is I'll spray this part as well. Get that a little white. And also spray inside of here. Just give the troll motor a nice little once over. Spray it and then wipe it down a little bit. So pretty much everything that I've hit with Deputy 40, whenever we get back from a fishing trip or even just a sandbar trip, what I'll do is I'll be sure to run the motor, wash the trailer off very well, make sure I hit the axle, make sure I hit all of the bolts and the backs of the tires, the fronts of the tires. I'll be sure to hit the, what the heck do we call that thing, Colin? Hydraulics. Hydraulics, thank you. Not a, not a technical person here. I'll be sure to hit the, the hydraulics on the power pole as well as the motor. I'll even turn the motor so I can make sure I get the whole entire steering arm there. I'll also be sure to spray out my pumps. I'll backflow the pumps so that way, even though I didn't pump any water, as soon as you launch that boat, they may fill up and it may run through your hoses still while you're running through the water. At least I know with my boat that I do that. So I'll go ahead and take the, the flows off and I'll back feed it nice and light, let some water go through the pumps, make sure that it doesn't get rusted solid. Another thing I'll do is I'll lightly mist off of my electronics. And I also what I do is I take a chamois and I dry off my windows. I dry off my electronics before I put the screens back on. I also dry all my chrome or stainless steel appliances just so it doesn't, the, the salt or the Leftover water doesn't sit and start to formulate any water spots and whatnot. We'll also be sure to run the motor with a good flush. So these are the earmuffs that we use to run the motor. A lot of the companies, even when I bought the boat, they told me that just using what the, the, uh, the, the motor provides there is what they recommend. But we've always used these. We've never had any issues. And we were able to run the motor, turn the motor on, really get it through the pumps as well. If I come back from a late night fishing trip, I'll use that. But in the morning, this is the first thing I do when I wake up. I come over and run the, run the motor, turn it on with the earmuffs on. It's getting plenty of water flow. 
and it is it's a very good way to make sure that that salt's just not sitting in your motor. I'll run the motor for about 10 minutes, give it a little bit of RPMs, and that will definitely prolong the life of your outboard. Something else that I'll do when I get back from a fishing trip or a sandbar trip, even though I'm just spraying the decks of the boat, I'll go ahead and open up all the hatches just in case any water got in there some way, somehow. I sprayed too forcefully. I'll be sure to open up all the hatches here on the, on the hard top up front. Just let them air out for the remainder of the day. And just especially underneath this back seat where all the battery connections are, just let that air out. Like I said, there may, no, may not be any water in there, but just let it air out, get some air, good circulation, so it's not just sitting there. If there's water, it's not creating any mildew or anything along those lines. Something that I recommend that I've always done on my boats, my father and my grandfather do on theirs, is we have onboard battery chargers. This plug right here is for my trolling motor batteries, and the one back there goes and goes to my house batteries, my starter, my motor, my lights, all that stuff. But it's also on a, it's on a trickle charge, so it's not gonna overcharge them, and it's not gonna damage the batteries over time. I leave them plugged in whenever I'm not using the boat, and it keeps them fully charged. I wash the boat. When I go to close the hatches at the end of the night, when it's all said and done, I'll be sure to plug the boat in so I'll be ready for my next trip. Well, that's pretty much gonna wrap up today's video. We gotta get the boat ready. We're going to the Keys tomorrow through Saturday. We have a three day trip. We're gonna be doing everything from spear fishing to kite fishing. Some, we're even gonna try some deep drop when we got an, an electric reel now. So we're super excited to show that to you guys. If you think you found any value in this video, please drop a like, drop a comment, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.